Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Voice Breakdown. We interrupt our Star Wars series to bring you this year's Christmas episode. What? How can you do this? This is outrageous. It's unfair. One of the most popular Christmas stories is Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. It is a truly heartwarming tale about a real curmudgeon discovering the meaning of Christmas. While there have been a few different iterations of The Grinch, including a new animated film just last year, we are going to be breaking down the voice of Jim Carrey's The Grinch from the 2000 movie. Let's break this voice down. Nothing like the holidays. Component number one, the vocal cords. The first thing to note about The Grinch, like all of Jim Carrey's characters, is that he is absolutely wild. He is all over the place, often doing different voices himself. In order to demonstrate his craziness, we will have to be very variable with our pitch and compression. Make the voice go to extremes of high and low, or compressed and decompressed. You also might hear use of the false chords for distortion when he is angry or intense. Don't! Another unmistakable sign of the hate jig bass! But for his primary voice, his standard pitch is fairly low. Oftentimes the voice goes so low that it falls into a tight vocal fry. As we've discussed in past videos, vocal fry is that cracking, popping sound you can make with your voice. We can make that tighter or looser. For the Grinch, it will be tighter. Even now, the terror is welling up inside you. Component number two, the larynx. The larynx for the Grinch is not too important. Generally, his voice has a neutral larynx, so for the most part, you can neglect this component. However, since his voice is so all over the place, his larynx will move, rising when his voice is brighter and thinner or descending when his voice gets darker or fuller. Denial is to be expected in the face of pure evil. Component number three, the tongue. The tongue is a crucial component to get the Grinch voice just right. We'll discuss this even more when we get to articulation but the Grinch's tongue is always retracted in the front. If you imagine that your tongue is constantly in an sh, sh, or er position, you will be on the right track. This actually affects the resonance of his voice by changing the shape of the oral cavity. Uh, uh. Getting that resonance is the secret to getting that Grinch sound. You want to know what happens to your gifts? They all come to me, in your garbage. Component number four, the soft palate. There is often a brightness to the Grinch's voice that can only be accomplished by nasal resonance. We can get that nasal resonance by lowering the soft palate. You can know if you are getting nasal resonance to happen by placing your hands lightly on your nose. If you feel vibrations under your fingers, you're doing it. If not, you need to send more sound into the nose by lowering that soft palate. As we have said earlier, the Grinch's voice can be pretty variable at times. But for those moments when it is really bright and whiny, we want to add more of that nasal resonance. I'm a psycho. I'm a psycho. Component number five, articulation. This is perhaps the most important component of all for this voice. While his voice is very variable, as we mentioned, the one thing that remains constant is his articulation. The best way to think about his articulation is imagining every sound is said through an sh sound. We noted how the tongue is pulled back. Specifically, it is pulled back into that sh position or an r position at times. This will cause a lot of sounds to be palatalized, meaning that the sound gets moved to the area of the hard palate. S will often become sh, or t will become ch, or at least be produced much further back. You see what I'm saying? Another key component of his articulation is that he often juts his jaw to the side and speaks out of the side of his mouth. Kids today, so desensitized by movies and television. Lastly, he sometimes rolls his R sounds. We could spend a whole video explaining how to do a rolled R, but if you can do it, he sometimes does that on words that begin with R. YouTube, I hope you are ready for Christmas. Component number six, prosody. Since the Grinch can be so manic, we are obviously going to have lots of inflection changes to worry about. 
While there isn't one inflection pattern he uses, you can expect to not stay in one inflectional style for too long. You can think about prosody in terms of three parameters, pitch, speed, and volume. So when you're talking like the Grinch, try to go to the extremes of these three. Do your highest pitch and your lowest pitch, your fastest talking and your slowest talking, and your loudest volume and your quietest volume. As you do this, be sure to get across feelings of being angry and erratic or unpredictable. Blast this Christmas music! It's joyful and triumphant. Let's recap. Component number one, the vocal cords. We want to vary his pitch and compression with a fairly low standard pitch, use the false vocal cords for distortion when angry, and occasional use of vocal fry. Component number two, the larynx. Have a neutral larynx, allowing it to naturally rise and fall as he varies his voice. Component number three, the tongue. Retract the tongue into an SH or R position. Component number four, the soft palate. Lower the soft palate to allow for some nasal resonance. Component number five, articulation. Make every sound sound a bit like shh. Roll your R's and jut the jaw to the side at times. Component number six, prosody. Vary his pitch, speed, and volume so that he sounds manic, angry, and erratic. The nerve of those hoot, inviting me down there on such short notice. Even if I wanted to go, my schedule wouldn't allow it. Four o'clock, wallow in self-pity. Four thirty, stare into the abyss. Five o'clock, solve world hunger, tell no one. Five thirty, dash eyes. 6.30, dinner with me, I can't cancel that again. 7 o'clock, wrestle with my self-loathing. I'm booked. Of course, if I'm on the loading till 9, I can still be done in time to lay in bed, stare at the ceiling, and slip slowly into madness. But what would I wear? Thank you for watching Voice Breakdown episode 30. Be sure to check out future episodes of Voice Breakdown, the show where we teach you how to imitate some of the most iconic voices. We wish you all a very Merry Christmas. See you next time. Blast this Christmas music! It's joyful and triumphant.